the Bible basically is a law book. It, uh, you know, you have to study law. The Bible is a book of laws. It's more than 613 laws, you know, as some Israelites that are Torah-based, they say, well, you know, there's only 613 laws in the Bible, starting from the Moses law, which is in Exodus. But tonight, I want to break down law and what law is so you can see that there's more than 613 laws. Uh, yeah, brother, I'm up, you know, got to go to work early in the morning, you know. Um, there's more than 613 laws in the Bible. So where do they base these laws from, right, that they say 613, right? So if you go, if you go to Deuteronomy, no, if you go to Exodus, the 20th chapter, right, if you go to Exodus, the 20th chapter, that's the start of what is called the Ten Commandments, right? And they start from there. And this is how they say in what's called the Torah. Now, the Torah is just the first five books of Moses. Uh, Deuteronomy, um, Genesis, Exodus, which is the leaving, Leviticus, which is the giving of the law through the Levites, what the Levites did. Uh, numbers, which is the numbering of the nation. And Deuteronomy, the word Deuteronomy means duo, the second time that Moses reissued the laws, okay? And Deuteronomy contains a lot of uh, major cursed prophecies that we were going to get involved into. So just breaking down what people, um, I hear a lot of people talk about they study the Torah and they try to say the Torah is the whole Bible. The Torah is not the whole Bible, okay? The Torah is no more than the first five books of Moses, and that is it. That's all the Torah is. Now, to clear up something, Moses was not alive in the book of Exodus, I mean, in the book of Deuteronomy. The Most High showed him, I mean, what am I talking about Deuteronomy? Moses was not alive in the book of Genesis. Bo Moses was born in the book of Exodus. So how is it that he saw Genesis? The, Mo the Most High held him. The Most High brought him to him later on in Exodus after he was born and showed him Genesis, creation, all the way up till he was born. Let's look at that right quick. Now I'm just going to be touching on things. Okay. So let's go back to Exodus, the first chapter, to show you that Moses was not alive. So then you have to say to yourself, well, if he was not alive during Genesis, how did he know all these thousands of years? How did he break all this stuff down? Okay. So I'm going to start at Exodus, the first chapter, and run through it right quick. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Four, right? Issachar, five. Zebulon, six. Benjamin, seven. Dan, eight. Naphtali, nine. Gad, ten. Asher, eleven. So how is it that there are 13 tribes? Because Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Those two sons took Joseph's spot and made 13. And then Dan was taken out and that made it 12. Okay, so you must know the math and the numbers. All the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. For Joseph, see that? Joseph was already there from Genesis because the brothers tried to kill Joseph and then they end up selling him, right? They end up selling him, and he was sold into Egypt. See, the Lord was setting this up. 
the Lord was setting this up. See, the Lord moved in ways that you don't understand. So when you think you're doing something bad, it works for the goodness of the Lord, his plans. Okay? Now, the hatred that is among black men has been in set because that's in our spirit. That's in our nature. Okay, let's look at that hatred. Let's go to Genesis. We hated our brothers, man. We hated our brothers. And that hatred is still in us amongst ourselves. <coughs> you want to know why we can't get along? Let's look at this hatred. Okay, let's look at this hatred. Genesis, the 37th chapter. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. So a man can have more than one wife, his father's wives. Okay, in the Bible, a man can have more than one wife. That's why it's a lie that people perpetrate that a man cannot have more than one wife, okay? And they use the Bible to justify that. And because we are under an American system and a European, uh, a Eurocentric Christian version, we are under this Eurocentric Christian lie that a man cannot have more than one wife. Meanwhile, all throughout the Bible, the Lord tells you that a man can have more than one wife. So where did that change? Because a lot of us are still Eurocentrized. You don't really believe in the Bible. And you pluck and choose what you want out of the Bible to justify how you feel. But when the truth, which is the written word, is right there, you go, no, 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 no. Genesis, the 37th chapter. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved them more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So this hatred, this hatred of the black man is still amongst us to this very day. To this very day, that's why we kill ourselves, okay? And he said unto them, here I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dream and for his words. Now, you must understand, Genesis right here, the 37th chapter, is what I'm about to show you in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Look at it well. Ninth verse. And he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. What is he talking about? What is the Most High showing him? Who is the sun? moon and the 11 stars it doesn't represent some mystical thing it represents the nation of israel how do we know let's hold that and let's go to revelation the 12th chapter i want to clear something up too i don't study with no one okay i want nobody to think that i study from some school Okay, the most I taught me this stuff years ago with the elders back in the 90s. Okay, I don't sit down and study with no brothers, and then the most I brought me the New Testament uh, years later on with certain brothers, and then that's it. That's all I chill with. I know the exact information from Genesis to Revelation. Okay, so I don't want nobody to think, well, yo, he down with this school or that school. No, I'm not down with no schools, man. I'm not down with no schools. Revelation, the 12th chapter. 
And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. The woman represents Israel. The woman represents Israel. Now look at that. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So now how do we know the woman represents Israel? Let's go into the book of Jeremiah. Let's go into the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah the sixth chapter and the second verse. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. See that? I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Why? Because the Lord being a man was married to us. The Lord being a man was married to us. How do we know the Lord was married? So the Lord don't marry men. The Lord don't marry men. He marries a woman. Okay? So let's go to Jeremiah the third chapter and the 14th verse. Let's look at this. He says, Turn, O backsliding children, say the Lord, for I am married unto you. The Lord was married to us. We are the woman. He is the man. So now when you go back now to Genesis, right, and he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, and the stars made obeisance to me. So it's not talking about the stars out in space. See, you gotta know how to break the Bible down. It's not talking about the stars out in the heavens. That's not what it's talking about. Okay? It's not talking about the stars out in heaven. And he told it to his father and his brethren, and his father rebuked him. And said unto him, What is this dream? And thou dost dream, Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren come to bow ourselves down to thee to the earth? So now, Joseph was given a special dream from the father that Israel and the sons are like stars, are like stars from heaven. That's the dream that he had that we were like stars. Okay? Now, and his brethren envied him. So this is why, to this very day, there's hatred amongst the tribes. But his father observed, and his brethren went to feed their flock in Sushem. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Sishem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Go, I pray thee, whether it be well. Right? Now, let's jump in the same chapter to the 38th verse. So when you read this, right, you're going to see how the brothers, first they were going to kill him. They were going to kill their own brother. So when we talk about we better than anybody else. We the same murderers, man. We the same murderers. Now let's look at the 36th verse of the same chapter. And the Midianites sold him, Joseph, into Egypt unto Patapapa, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So that's how in Exodus now Joseph was already down there. See that? So now let's come back to Exodus now. So I'm showing you how Moses was already down in, how Moses was down there, but Joseph was already down there. The Most High was already setting Joseph up because he was going to bring famine into the land. Okay. Seven verse. 
and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. So our people is filling this land now, but we're not more, but we wax abundantly. They have tried many different things and now this COVID-19 crap. Now there arose a new king over Egypt. See, now there's a new king over Egypt. America is Egypt. First there was the Bushes, then uh, Clintons. These are kings, okay? Kings and pharaohs is the same thing, okay? Kings and pharaohs is the same word, just like presidents, okay? So we are in Egypt. We are in Egypt. How do we know that we are in Egypt? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 chapter and the 68 verse. Because we would be sold here in Egypt, this land of bondage, to our slave masters. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. How did we come here? With ships, Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. So we walked out of bondage, physical bondage in Africa, and now we came back into bondage, sold from off the west coast of Africa, brought on slave ships by the white man into bondage in here in America. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way wherever I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more. See what no more? Our homeland, okay, of the land of Israel. So Africa is not our homeland, okay? Thou shalt see it no more again. And there, where? In Egypt. So here in Wall Street, we were sold as slaves all up and down the East Coast. And there, in Egypt, you shall be sold unto your enemies. So these people are not your friends. They are your enemies. That's why they shoot you. That's why they kill you. Okay, that's why they, they put up all these drug pharmacies in your neighborhoods. They sell you alcohol, terrible food, okay? So that's what your enemy does to you. You can't put stores in your enemy's neighborhoods. You can't go into an Indian neighborhood. You can't go into a Jewish neighborhood. They're your enemies, okay? And there in Egypt, you shall be sold unto your enemies. So we were sold like cattle all up and down the eastern seaboard. That's how Wall Street came into existence. They, off our economic suppression, that's how they made millions and billions of dollars. That's how they set up the International Monetary Fund. That's how they set up world banks, robbing you. And now they send you to work for $8 an hour, $15 an hour, and then they take back taxes from out of that. So there you are sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond women, slave men and slave women, and no man shall buy you. What does it mean shall buy you? No man shall be able to take the nation out of this physical and spiritual suppression that we are in. So Moses issued the first testimony. There are two testimonies. Okay? There are two testimonies in the Bible. The first testimony by the first testator came through Moses. That was the first baptism. So the testator is the person the testator is the person. The testimony is what he testifies, the oral testification of what is given. Christ now brought the second testimony, the heavenly testimony. That's what Christ brought. Moses gave the first testimony. Okay, so I want you to understand once again, the Bible is based upon law. Okay, the Bible is based upon law. For you to truly understand the law classes, you must 
get a Black's Law Dictionary. You cannot speak to the judges unless you are speaking to them in their language. This is a Black's Law Dictionary, and this is the sixth edition. Okay? This is the sixth edition. So I bought this. These books are very, very valuable. I bought this book years ago. So it costs a lot of money now. Right? When you become a lawyer, or trying to become a lawyer, you must understand law terms. So for you to understand law terms, you must understand their dictionary. And their codes is written in Latin. Okay? Their codes.